guys, and as usual, welcome to another kit review. So today, as you can see, we're having a look at a kit from Tamiya. It's in 140A scale, and it is one of Tamiya's Focke-Wulf 190s. This one is an A8, or an A8R2. Now the difference between the two A8 and A8R2 is minor. So the A8 was armed with four... 20 millimeter cannon in the wings. The R2 had two of those cannons replaced by 30 millimeter cannons. It also had more armor plate on the fuselage to protect the pilot and a 30 millimeter glass on the canopy because these focke wolves were primarily used to intercept Allied bombers over Germany in the closing stages of World War II. So this kit is kit number 61095, came out in 2005, and this one cost me $22 Australian. So um, average price for this one is around the $30 to $35 mark, maybe a bit more depending on who's actually selling it. So for $22, I thought, why not? Another Focke Wolf can't hurt. Alrighty, so this one has some really nice box art, as you can see. He's just finished a pass on two US bombers cutting through over the, presumably over Germany. So let's have a look at the rest of the box. On the side, you've got a profile picture of this one here, which is for, let's see if I can bring that one closer for you, Ernst Schroeder, JG300. And on the other side, another profile of Hauptmann, Wilhelm Moritz, and he's um, from JG3. So in this particular kit, which is, of course, standard Tamiya, you do get markings for five different individual aircraft. So let's have a look and see what's in the box. One bag of sprues, which contains the fuselage and the lower wing, and the bits and pieces, bombs, etc. that you can fit to this aircraft. Some of those you won't use. One bag of clears, two different types of canopy. Another bag has the propeller and other fittings. The last bag, of course, has the upper wings. Another propeller because you can have slightly different versions, which had a thinner or a wider propeller. The copy um, tub, of course, and the wheel well, etc. So, pretty much standard Tamiya. Instructions. What I always like about Tamiya. A 48th scale painting guide for the basic camouflage. This one also includes the decals, etc. for this particular pilot here. So this is, as you can see, William Axowitz, June 1944. So that's his aircraft on the back. This just shows you where the decals go on the bottom. We'll have a closer look at that anyway. Usual Tamiya tech tips and a really nice decal sheet, which we will have a look at later, including paint masks for the canopy. Okay, so that's what's in the box. In a second, we'll have a look at the instructions and the decals and carry on from there. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions. Now, as usual with Tamiya kits, you do have a brief history of the Focke Wolf A8 in four different languages. Japanese, German, French, and English. Overleaf, you've got your recommended tools, your paint callouts, which are all Tamiya colors, of course. Normal port cautions. Now, in this particular kit, you will notice, and I'll see if I can show it to you. Probably easier to show it to you with the canopy. So you'll notice it says A, B, C, D. This is where you make your choice. This one is E. So the differences are minimum only. Um, version, I should say, 
I'll say version C gets these two additional armor plates for the side of the cockpit. This is version E, which has a piece removed from that particular cockpit. But uh, we'll carry on with the rest of the instructions first. So naturally enough, you do have your cockpit tub goes together first. You do get a pilot with this one. So you do have a choice. You can paint the instruments, but they are also supplied as decals. Or you could get yourself some aftermarkets to suit this aircraft. Then we go on to the construction of the fuselage. Now this here is, I'll see if I can find it for you, these decals. These are the additional armor plate decals for the R8. Um, Tammy has chosen to use them to supply decals to represent the um, extra armor rather than a piece of plastic or something like that, which is quite unusual. So I'll give you a shot of those individually. And once you've done that, so you need to make choices as you go along, or initially anyway, as to which particular version you're going to, to construct. Naturally enough, you've got your wheel well, bottom of the aircraft, top wings going on to the bottom wings, fairly straightforward, some panels going on. You'll see throughout, it has colour call out and also an uh, letter call outs for the particular versions that you're going to um, create so once you've made your choice it depends on what uh, you're going to put in there whether you're going to put the 30 millimeter cannon in or just have two 20 millimeter cannons etc then you've just got the wings going on the fuselage the tail planes going on engine cowling wheels fairly straightforward it does give you a diagram as to the angle at which the wheels from the fock wheel need to sit so um, a lot of aircraft kits don't show you this which is a shame but you do need to know that yes those undercarriage legs are at an angle and that is the angle it's not straight down it is actually angled forward it's a very handy guide to have for constructing um, Fockerwolves, and I believe also Tamiya's uh, Messerschmitts do exactly the same thing. Overleaf, you've just got your drop tank. That's an option. You don't necessarily have to, but for extra fuel to reach um, the height of um, Allied bombers, they needed to add a drop tank. This is the cockpit section, which I showed you before. So depending on which version you've chosen, you may have to remove a little tiny piece on this particular one or add these additional armor plates to the side. Overleaf. This is your propellers, of course. Again, depending on which one, this is C, which is, has the wider blades. All right? This is A, B, D, E, which is, has the thinner blades on it. Uh, you do get decals for those uh, nose bands. Then it's just a matter of deciding whether you want the cockpit open or closed, depending on whether you're flying or not. And then we get to painting. So this one here is October 1944. Okay, it's light See if I can pronounce his name properly. Brett Schneider. Probably got that one wrong, but close enough. You've got this one here. This is August 44. Okay, that's Hauptmann William Moritz. Overleaf. You have October 44. Winter Officer. Let's see. Earhart, I think, is probably the right one for him 
And this one here is November 44, Winter Officer Schroeder. Now he's flying the number, the version E. All right, so all the other ones are um, A8R2s. This particular one, E, is just a straight A8. And that's four of them, four of the suggested markings and colors that you could put on there. The fifth one is this one, the one that is the 148 scale painting guide to the camouflage. So all the camouflage schemes exactly the same, same as Spitfires and everything else. They all use the same thing because they all use templates. This one just has different markings. They're fairly straightforward. Usual Luftwaffe colours. But this is always a handy guide to have for a 148 scale plane. If you wanted to, you could almost copy at least the wings. Or even if you wanted to destroy this, cut them out and use them as templates on your own model. Alright, so that's the painting guides and I've already shown you one little decal sheet so this is the other one so as you can tell it has got squash stickers up the top there you'll notice that they're by themselves that's so that depending on the country that this is being, model is being shipped to they can actually be cut off at this point in time Australia doesn't uh, ban the swastika, although I believe they are thinking about it. So whether that's going to affect um, model makers in Australia or accuracy, I'm not sure. I believe it's just public displays. So hopefully it's not going to affect these at all because you can't deny history. This is what it was. You might as well see it the way it was and remember what that symbol stood for so let's have a look at the rest of it so these are your propeller boss stripes in four different colors your fuselage stripes there are your instrument decals there are your names for the sides of the fuselage for each individual pilot and yes you do get pilot seat belts as a decal so really nice set very clean i do love these decals and i'll give you a shot of those and the other thing you get is Two little poly caps, these are for the propeller to make sure it goes around. And these, oh, they're upside down. Paint masks for the cockpit canopy. Now, they're not cut out. You will have to cut them out yourself, but at least Tamiya has made the decision to include these with the kit rather than you have to get aftermarkets, etc. So that is a good thing, and I wish most, in fact, I wish all um, aircraft manufacturers would include these with their kits. It would make life a lot easier and probably cheaper. And next we'll have a look at the sprues. So I'll show you this one first because this is loose, and yes, it was intentionally put in by Tamiya loose this of course is your engine cowling really nice diesel and sharply done beautiful hinge detail on the sides there nice really nicely done oops sorry that went out of focus next we'll have a look at these now this of course is your clears so Gun sight, front of the cockpit, additional armoured glass for the sides of the cockpit, 
Now, you'll see you've got two cockpit canopies. This one is not used. This is the one that you use. And depending on the version that you're going to model, you may have to remove that little bit there. But apart from that, nothing else to be done. So that's really nice. And they are nicely clear. Really nicely done. All right, so that's the clears. Next, we'll have a look at this one. This is the bottom of the aircraft, of course, with the undercarriage doors on a sprue by itself. So, no, you don't have movable or poseable flaps, I should say, or ailerons on this kit. Um, standard Tamiya, they are usually fixed. But you got to remember that on the ground, the majority of aircraft always had their ailerons and flaps in line with the wing so that they didn't get damaged by people trying to walk underneath them they were just or winds or whatever they were just always locked back in normal position and as usual with Tamiya really nice sharp and crisp panel lines not too deep you can still feel them that's just to make them apparent when you use a panel wash of course on real aircraft you can't actually see well you can't see them you can't feel them because they're always butted up hard against each other but beautifully done really nicely done so that's the bottom wing And next, we'll have a look at the top wing. So you go top wing, your pilot. This is the back of the cockpit. This particular propeller is the thin bladed one. That is your um, wheel, wheel bay, I should say, tail planes, cockpit tub, engine. And let's have a look. We'll start with the pilot. Standard Tamiya Pilot. Detail's not too bad, but though there is going to be a bit of cleanup around the mole line. The wing, again, really nice panel lines on this. Very sharp. I do like the rivets. They do stand out quite well. Same for both wings. Nicely done. That is the back of the cockpit. There's your thin bladed propeller. Turn this around so you can see the cockpit tub. So you do get the side instruments, etc., that go on there. Tail planes. Engine. Now, you could dress that up if you wanted to with some wires, etc., but you can't really see the engine through the cowling anyway, so not really worth the effort pilot seat and it does have some creases in it and undercarriage so really nicely done very sharp detail there's no flash on this as i said this is a 2005 kit so it's been around for almost 20 years but um still sharp do like that
And the next brew out is, of course, the fuselage. So two fuselage halves, top of the engine, drop tank, undercarriage legs, and instrument panel. Now, the rockets, the bombs are not used in this particular version of the Fokker World. So they can go into your spares box. Let's have a look. So really nice detail on the drop tank. There's your undercarriage wheels. They will need a bit of cleanup along the mold line and um, maybe a little bit of sanding to flatten them down a little bit. Undercarriage legs, really nice. The panel lines, oops, sorry, get that into focus for you, would really help. Panel lines and rivet lines, etc. on the fuselage hub is beautiful. So let's have a look inside. And as you can see, there's no detail because you do have a cockpit tub which sits in here. Overleaf, there's the other fuselage half. Really nicely done. And as I said, the bombs and the rockets, they're not used on this particular version. There is your instrument panel. That is one of the side instrument panels. So you can paint these up or use decals if you want to. All right, so I'll give you a shot of that. And the last screw is this one. So this is the wide bladed propeller. And these are the panels that go underneath the wings to fill in where the uh, rocket panels are. Fairly straightforward. Nice detail though. And not much of a cleanup along the edges. A little bit of cleanup. Careful cleanup around the edge of the propeller but nothing huge so really nicely done so that's the last sprue and that's it guys that is Tamiya's 148 scale Fokker 190 A8 or A8R2 kit number 61095 came out in 2005 it is still available uh, at a reasonable price and a really nice looking Fokker Wolf kit I do like the decals they're fairly comprehensive and it does give you a variety of uh, pilots that you could model this aircraft for so Anyway, as I said, that brings us to the end of this review. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your likes, your comments and, and subscriptions. They are all appreciated and very, very welcome. And as usual, guys, because this is the end of the video, until next time, stay safe, stay well, and I will see you later.